Hello, everybody, and welcome. It's Hugh here at Locks On, and I'm here with another one of our focus series webinars. Now, what we've been doing in all of these webinars is we've been looking at a key topic of Locks On or a key function or function block. Now, we're going to continue that theme for today, and we're going to be looking at something that we started with yesterday, and that is new features that will be coming in version 11 of Config. And today's new feature that we're going to be looking into is SEER DC09, or for the layman's, just SEER. It's just SEER. Now, what is SEER? What does it mean? What's it used for? Uh, and this is Tiran's lovely uh, marketing blurb about it. SEER DC09 is one of the world's most widely used digital communication protocol standards for transmitting information about a hazardous situation to a control center, such as an alarm being triggered and a signal being sent to a central control station. Using the SEER DC09 function, the Loxon Mini Server can now send a signal, including a predefined message to a SEER server. What the hell does that mean? Um, now, to understand SEER is to understand alarm systems. Not locks on alarm systems, just alarm systems as a whole. So when alarms first started becoming prominent and people started having them installed in their, in their homes, it came the scenario whereby we realized that just having a loud box shouting down the street while we're at work wasn't necessarily all that helpful. And so alarm manufacturers started putting something called a speech dialer on their panels. And what that did is that wired into your phone line. And when your alarm went off, you got a call to your phone and it would read you a message to say what's happened on your system. Your alarm has gone off. Usually the speech dialer would just play a single pre-recorded text to speech to say, your alarm has gone off. Please go and check your property or something like that. And that was great. People could now have some form of management or monitoring of their alarm. Now, of course, this all happened back in the day when mobile phones weren't as prevalent as they are today, so it would usually ring a landline. Then what started happening is people went, well, okay, I'm not always at home or I'm not always able to answer my mobile or maybe there's more than one person that I need to signal that my alarm's gone off to. And so we started introducing this idea of alarm signaling. And so we wanted our alarm panels to start signaling to something known in the biz as an ARC, an alarm receiving center. And that is basically a room full of people who are hired to wait for alarms from people's houses to go off, to recognize that they've gone off, and then to ring through a list of what's called key holders, people who are responsible for that system and they would ring them one and then second and then third and go down the entire list of key holders until somebody picked up and then they'd go okay number seven Thiel lakes alarm has gone off you are on the key holders list and then that person would go okay brilliant and the first method of doing this was with something called pin signaling and the way that pin signaling worked is there would be a little um, monitoring device, usually about yay big. Big players on the market at the time were people like Jewelcom and Redcare and Webway. It would be a little device about that big that would sit inside your alarm panel. Your alarm panel's outputs would be wired into it, into pins, hence the term pin signaling. And then it would be this device instead that would connect to your phone line or would use a SIM card to signal out. And so when your intruder alarm triggered, it would trigger a pin. The alarm receiving center would see the pin and then again, they'd phone the key holders list. Uh, and the thing with pin signaling is that there were different pins designated to different alarms. I can't remember what they all are anymore. So I'm gonna say them all completely wrong and I apologize in advance, but you would usually have like pin one for your intruder alarm, pin three would be your panic alarm, pin five would be your fire alarm, so on and so forth. So the receiving center, wouldn't be able to tell you what detector had gone off, but they could at least tell you whether it was your fire alarm or your intruder alarm. And this was great. We could now have key holder response. And from that, we could then introduce things like police response and police monitoring and the police being called out. And then we got this idea of, okay, this is great. We've now got monitoring of our alarm panels, but I want to know exactly which detector has gone off. And this is then when SEER comes in. So SEER and Contact ID, both of which we now support, 
allows the sending of actual text to an alarm receiving center. Now, conventionally on alarm panel, this would still be done through something like a dual com module that would be an extra part to the alarm. You would usually wire them into the speech dialer and you'd hijack that. And then it would ring through the phone line or through a SIM card to an alarm receiving center and it would pass through that contact ID or that SEER data. And that would tell you exactly which zone has gone off. So when they're going through this key holders list or they're ringing the police, they can say exactly which sensor has gone off. Now, there's obviously the question of with locks on alarm, we're not a graded alarm. So in the UK, you will not be able to get police response on that alarm because police response requires an alarm that is graded and therefore in accordance with EN 50131 and is also certified by the Association of Police Chiefs. Ours is not. So police response, no, no. But alarm receiving centres don't care whether your alarm is graded or not. You're paying them regardless. We've always had the ability with the locks on alarm of being able to do something like the caller service or an email or a notification. And they, those are great. They're brilliant services. Caller service, it's great. I can answer the phone and I get a pre-recorded text-to-speech message. I can also do config where I can have it ring through a list of people in order. It's great. Some people like that human element, the fact that it's a real life person on the other end of the phone that's calling them. They can give over their password because when you have key holders through an alarm receiving center, you have a password that you have to give to say that you're responsible for that system. And there's that little bit more of human interaction involved in the process. And this is where this comes in. And so we can do SEER and contact ID. However, the great thing is we don't require an extra bit of hardware to do them. So we don't require a dual com module or a webway module or a red care module. We can actually send that SEER and contact ID text through the network across the internet. The only requirement is you need a second generation mini server. You can't do SEER through the first gen mini server. And so now I've given you a little bit of backgrounds of intruder alarm panels and how all this works. Let's look at how we actually then set it up. So firstly, we would obviously sign a contract with an alarm receiving center, ARC. That's the most common term in the UK for them. Uh, other countries may call them control centers or command centers or CMCs, There's loads of different terms for them. In the UK, we call them ARCs. When you set up your account with your ARC, they will give you an account number. And so you take that account number, they may also give you a hexadecimal password as well to encrypt the SEER signaling between the two devices. And any good alarm center that uses a modern piece of software like Patriot will also be able to see, receive SEER signaling through IP. And so they'll then be able to as well. And what we do is on the mini server, provided it's a Gen 2, on messages up here, we select SEER DC09. And we then say that this is to trigger our ARC. We put in the server address. This could be either a domain name or an IP address, depends on how advanced our ARC is and whether they've paid for a domain name or not. And you have to also specify the ports, which should all be given to you by your alarm receiving center. If they have a backup SEER address as well, you could put that in there as well. You can then specify the polling time so how often the mini server will poll this address to make sure it's still there and how often it will pull it will poll the backup address. We can say what the timeout is for a server response. So if after three seconds on its poll time, it hasn't received a response, it triggers an alarm locally for us. At the moment, we only support TCP, which to be honest is what you want anyway, because TCP has a handshake and therefore it provides a level of security because end-to-end -end, there is a level of acknowledgement of the signal and a response. And then you can specify the data format and we can do either SEER or contact ID as the text types. So whichever one your alarm receiving center prefers, we can send either. My preference is for SEER. You get a little bit more detail with SEER. Then if they've given you a hexadecimal uh, encryption key, you would put that in there. And in the account, you put in your account number. 
So if they tell you that your account number is F123456.7, you put that in there. If there's an account prefix, you can put that in there as well. And then receiver number is completely optional. Usually you will just need the account number, the data format and the server address. Once you've put that in there, then you find the block that you would want to link this to. Um, more than likely, you would want to link it to something like the, um, the central fire alarm um, or water alarm block. So those, um, uh, the, the central blocks like that, burglar alarm block or the alarm sequence, one of those, and you'd probably want to link it to something like the text output. So you could then take this, link it to the text output, and just like any other message in Loxon, you can specify the message when on. And so it will pass through the exact text that comes out here. So it'd be last alarm triggering event. And that would then pass through that exact text to the alarm receiving center. And that's exactly what they would see on their screen. So when they start ringing their key holders list, they can say, yeah, fire alarm has gone off. And it says it was at 15.13 on the 22nd of April. And it was the fire alarm detector in the kitchen. Perfect. What more could we want? And we could action it from then on. The beauty with this especially is in a lot of prestigious properties, they may actually pay for a key holder service. And what that means is basically a big burly guy who drives around in a van. And if an alarm goes off at one of their customer's properties, he drives around, does a loop to make sure there's nobody there. And if there is, he strong arms them and calls the police but a key holder company will only respond to a call from an alarm receiving center. So now that we can talk to alarm receiving centers, you could have professional key holding response. Other than that, it's like any other message in Loxon, you drag it out as many times as you want, link it to as many places as you want, and you either pass through the text directly or you specify the exact message that you want to send. And that is SEER and SEER signaling that will be coming out in Loxon version 11, for the second generation mini server. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you've got any questions or anything else, please get in touch with us and I will see you again next time. Goodbye.